mutlaka vardır diye düşünüyorum. Okay, I was waiting for my cue to start. There you go, I got it. Hello, everyone. Um, I am Elif Bereketli. I'm a journalist and uh, a presenter with TRT World, and it is a pleasure to be here with you today in this uh, panel titled Preserving Cultural Heritage in a Digital Age. I'm not saying it is a pleasure to be here just for the sake of it, because that's what presenters say. No, I really am delighted to be here because in a, world of, in a world full of hard power, quote unquote, real politics, wars, poverty, genocide, famine, we're, I'm with a, a group of people, a group of panelists or esteemed guests here who value something that many perhaps would not deem as important or as urgent and I find that very valuable and um, I am very delighted to be here. We all follow it closely. People in Ukraine are dying. In Yemen, Libya, Syria, Afghanistan, the sustainable peace and security are off the table, but we still need cultural heritage. Why? And what does digitalization, the process of digitalization, change in the dynamics when it comes to preserving cultural heritage? Now, um, I have a very, very important uh, group of people here to talk about all these very important questions and I'm delighted to be uh, moderating this um, session. Now, let me introduce our panelists here. Let's start uh, with um, Semeon saksko burgotsky <coughs> former Prime Minister of Bulgaria to my right. Welcome, uh, Your Majesty. Next to uh, Saksko Burgatsky is Gunay Efendieva, President of Turkic Culture and Heritage Foundation. Yes. Ömer Kocaman, Deputy Secretary General, Organization of Turkic States. And um, Jenny Mutundu, Deputy Minister of International Relations and Cooperation of Namibia. <laughs> and last but not the least, Johnny Messo, President of World Council of Arameans. What are we going to talk about today? What are the opportunities offered by digital age? What are the challenges? And what is the role of human expertise in the, in the new era, in this, uh, I mean, so to say, a digital revolution that we're going through? So welcome all, welcome all of you, and also welcome everybody else here. Please do share with us what you think are the highlights from uh, what is being talked about on the stage. Please tweet using the hashtags meet for diplomacy and 
recoding diplomacy, meet for diplomacy as in a number four, not the word for, which makes a difference when tweeting, I guess. And please note down some good questions because we will have a Q&A session after uh, uh, the speeches. Now, I want to start with Janali Matundu. Hello, very good to have you, your presence here in, in Namibia. Tell us, have you experienced digital advancements to be um, a factor for good or bad when it comes to preserving cultural heritage? Thank you, moderator. And thank you for having me, distinguished panelists, members of the audience. Uh, let me first uh, present what Namibia so far has done as far as uh, digital... Yeah, okay. Let me start by expressing Namibia's gratitude to the organizers of this very important Antalya Diplomacy Forum for including Namibia as part of the panelists of the 2022 edition of this important forum. The title, Preserving Cultural Heritage in a Digital Age, is as relevant as it is topical consideration, the fourth industrial revolutionary, where harnessing technology for sustainable development is at the center of the development discourse. The government of the Republic of Namibia recognizes the Catholic role that culture plays in a discourse of sustainable development. In view of the above, in the late 2021, the Namibian National Assembly adopted the revised arts and culture and heritage policy. The policy seeks to affirm and give space to all Namibians while recognizing that special attention and support is needed for cultural practices, art forms, and communities that were marginalized by colonialism and apartheid. So, moderator, ladies and gentlemen, the modernized advancement in virtual technology in recent times has provided new opportunities for cultural and heritage organizations to engage, support, and attract users or enthusiasts by creating interactive experiences that can be used to collaborate, <coughs> learn, and entertain, and ensure the restoration and maintenance of documentation and archiving. During the year 2021, the Namibian government, through the National Heritage Council, has hosted a virtual augmented reality tour of the Teufelfontein World Heritage Site, of which was the first of its kind for the National Heritage Council of Namibia and Namibia as a whole. This is an indication that we have embraced the use of technologies to create awareness and promote cultural education through digital and pictorial mm -hmm. methods to reach the wider society. The Twifel Fontaine is one of the Namibia World Heritage Site and is a massive open air art gallery of which 2,000 plus rock engravings estimated to be 6,000 years old. Mm -hmm represent one of Africa's largest and most noteworthy consideration of the rock art. Madam Moderator, ladies and gentlemen, on the continental level, the African Union of Heads of States and Government has declared the year 2021 as the AU Year of the Art, Culture, and Heritage. That was the theme uh, uh, whenever we, uh, you heard of AU meetings, so the whole year was dedicated to that theme. So, leave us for building the Africa we want. This is indeed a true testimony of the importance of Africa attaches to perseverance, preservation of arts and culture and heritage. Coming to conclusion, Diplomacy is an art that mediates conflicts, reintegrates diverse cultures, and creates path for an environmental-friendly society. 
May we see this panel discussion as not only a discourse with no direct impact for the global community, but as a means <coughs> to change diplomacy for better of all through preserving our cultural and heritage. Thank you, moderator. Thank you. That sounds like an interesting project. So I was just wondering, before we move on to other, other speakers, mm. is it possible for all of us to actually, you know, be part of that augmented reality tour of this fountain that you were mentioning? Is it mm. possible for us to do that? Yes, Mr. Moderator, you can be part of the project. That's, that's mm. really good. That's what mm. we're talking about mm -hmm. here, I guess, in Namibia, mm. somewhere that I would probably uh, not be going in the you know, near future, I guess, not in my travel plans, but I would definitely mm. go and see the fountain online, and that's exactly what we're talking mm. about. Now, I want to turn mm. to Gunai Efendieva, uh, <laughs> because you know, you, I, I just need to say this, I guess, before you start, that you will have to leave uh, the panel yes. because you have to be part of um, Her Excellency Turkish First Lady Emine Erdogan's panel too, so maybe we'll continue with you. I want to hear your experience in cultural heritage preservation and digitalization. Has it been easier or harder? How has your experience been like? Thank, <clears throat> thank you, dear Elif. Thank you very much for your question. Dis distinguished guests, uh, dear participants, I am very, very happy to be here today. I am very glad to be here again in uh, our beautiful Antalya and this diplomatic forum. And I greet all of you uh, on behalf of the International Turkey Culture Heritage Foundation. Of course, this forum... Uh, 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 every time has had a significant impact on the diplomatic and political environment, highlighting and addressing its ever-changing nature. That is confirmed by the fact that so many of us are here despite the most serious developments in many parts of the world, as this platform is seen as an important conduit for the furtherance of diplomatic relations and taking the most uh, critical issues we face today. I believe that just as in the first forum last 2022, this forum will also generate new ideas and decisions regarding the issues discussed. Since ancient time, culture has been a paramount factor in protecting, nurturing, and advancing civilization on Earth. Today, improving general knowledge about the history of world culture, the role of mutual tolerance as a condition for survival, peaceful coexistence, cooperation, and sustainable development of mankind is very important. This challenge is especially actualized and brought to the fore in today's rapidly changing reality, when every culture with a unique system of traditions is a subject to a spiritual crisis and is undergoing a transformation of values. All people and all nations are now aware of the fragility of our world and wish to preserve the culture and history of mankind for future generations. Digital technologies represent a chance to preserve and promote human history. Thanks to them, today everyone has access to get acquainted with the cultural heritage of other people. In a digital age, requiring knowledge of information technology, every citizen of the world should be able to use innovative tools and platforms to promote and preserve the cultural heritage and values of their nation. This ability brought to us by technology enables us to take our cultures rapidly beyond borders. Any music, movie, theater, or other media can be shared throughout the, world, the whole world within seconds. The reliable protection of intangible cultural heritage carries significant importance for its transmission for future generations. Granting us the ability to communicate with any person in any part of the world at a moment's notice, store and share various types of data, search for and find any information at will, modern technology has made remarkable contributions to our and other organizations' efforts to research, preserve, promote our cultures and heritage. This, the technological advancement in recent years have aided the foundation in this cause significantly, allowing us to conduct events, commemorate great personalities of the Turkic world, and readily share its heritage. 
I would like to give brief information about our foundation and share our experience in the digital arena, arena in the background of our uh, implemented project. The foundation was established by the initiative of the President of the Republic of Azerbaijan and with the support of the Presidents of the Republic of Kazakhstan, Kyrgyz Republic, and Republic of Turkey. Within the framework of the Baku and Istanbul summits of the Turkic States Organization, Uzbekistan and Turkmenistan joined the ranks of organization, and Hungary received the status of observer country of the foundation. The mission of our organization is to study, preserve, promote the rich Turkic heritage, and familiarize the world community with the cultural values of the Turkic world. At the same time, by bringing various cultures together, the foundation aims at building bridges between civilizations. Despite being a young organization, during the period of its activity, the foundation has implemented a number of different projects, has organized round tables, conferences, exhibitions, concerts, published books, and held anniversaries of great personalities of the Turkic world. For, uh, of course, COVID pandemic brought serious change to our everyday life. In a strictly quarantined region, we had to find new ways of communication and methods of conducting activities. Maybe the digitalization of in this period saved us from particular isolation because education, socializing, work, and life in general went online. In this regard, the foundation also had to adapt to the changing environment and implement projects using innovative tools and platforms. For example, in order to familiarize school children with the centuries old history of our ancestors, the foundation organized a week of museums of the Turkic world, during which school children from different countries joined virtual tours of museums of Azerbaijan, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Turkey, Uzbekistan, Hungary, every day. In the future, uh, where the prospects for virtual platforms are growing day by day, especially when we look at current projects by Meta and other virtual uh, uh, reality engineers, there is potential to work with these companies in order to provide cultural education in the form of museums, storytelling, lessons, games, and other uh, in the platforms they built. Many developed countries have made uh, important projects for the digitalization of cultural heritage. O also, we announced online drawing and essay contests among children and students on the theme Let's Protect Our World, Traditions of the Turkic World. The main goal was to attract the young generation to the study and protection of ancient traditions, to show that even in this difficult time, culture and art, the acquisition of knowledge, are one of the most important factor, de factors determining our lives. This project demonstrated the huge creative potential of children and youth who responded from a number of different countries, which were not only Turkic Straits. For example, from Bulgaria to uh, last year, we celebrated uh, 880th anniversary of the great Azerbaijani poet, Nizami Ganjavi, who significantly influenced Turkic and world literature. We conducted many events such as concerts based on the poems by Nizami Genjavi, played by the Dede Gorgut Chamber Orchestra, established by the foundation, published book in different countries, and held online conferences discussing his life and creativity. At the same time, at the uh, Baku International Book Fair, we presented the electronic version of the book Seven Beauties by Nizami Genjavi. This enabled a wide audience to familiarize themselves with the content of book. In general, in the age of internet, especially in the young generation, we can observe the gradual substitution mm -hmm. of traditional to online means of learning. For example, from tomes to audio books, mm -hmm. video cassettes and TV to media streaming platforms, newspapers to online news and social media. For example, uh, be very honestly, for me, uh, to hold a newspaper in my hands with a cup of coffee, for, and <laughs> this is um, very, very uh, exciting for me. But times 
have changed. Are changing, absolutely. There, there is no doubt uh, that the digital age has brought cultural globalization apart mm -hmm. from political and economical globalization. The important question is, does cultural globalization impede our efforts to preserve the cultural heritage to our countries? Do countries have to resort to protectionism in the cultural sphere and abstain from modern technologies and platforms in order to preserve their own, own cultures and uh, heritage? I personally believe that while each country should preserve their cultural identities within its borders, technologies are to be worked with, with and not ferret. Um, and the impact of technological advancements can additionally be seen in the activities of the Haidar Ali Foundation, yes. headed by the first vice president uh, of Azerbaijan, Mehriban Aliyeva, which has made many strides in digitalized parts of world cultural heritage. Example of this are the establishment of online libraries displaying a number of works significant to world heritage, virtual museums allowing visitors of uh, the site to familiarize themselves with works of culture. One of the most important works at the moment of the Haidar Ali Foundation is the restoration and revival of cultural monuments which were subject to destruction and misappropriation for approximately 30 years under mm -hmm. occupation in Karabakh, an uh, integral part of Azerbaijan. So for us, uh, uh, we representatives of international organizations, by uh, protecting, studying, promoting, and passing on cultural heritage of future generations, need to create necessary bonds of friendship between different cultures, Absolutely. interact with other civilizations, draw parallels and find common ground. In today's realities, the technological advancements mm -hmm. uh, are an integral part of our everyday life. So we are always open for, uh, uh, for, uh, for looking forward to cooperate with various organizations with common goals contributing to the establishment of peace and promotion of spiritual, multicultural values of the people Fantastic. of the world. Fantastic. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you, you so much. much. I, think, I think the point that you made in terms of globalization and the relationship, the tricky relationship between local and global in that sense and how it reflects on cultural heritage. I mean, is cultural heritage a global phenomena? I mean, is Syrian, a, a monument in Syria that is being destroyed something that I should care about as a Turkish person? These are really interesting questions. I really hope that we will have the time to touch upon them. And you mentioned an augmented reality project, a virtual reality project, just like Namibia. So it's, uh, it, I see a pattern there, and I'm gonna, uh, I will turn to uh, you as well, and I wonder whether you are doing that in your uh, endeavors. You have virtual reality. Uh, I will ask that, but before, I want to turn to your majesty. I would like to ask you why we should care about cultural heritage. Please uh, remember my introduction. The world is in turmoil right now. And we are here talking about culture, monuments, museums, artworks. Please convince me why is it important and why we should care, why younger generations care. We have students watching us here, listening to us here. Please tell us what your uh, tremendous experience in this field has taught you. Thank you, moderator. Uh, to take a holistic approach to culture and so forth, I think is very difficult, but I'll just talk about what concerns me, if I can say, and that's, for instance, Bulgaria, which has a very rich and different cultural heritage through the civilizations that have been in contact with us. So we are very well aware of the importance of preserving it. And nowadays, obviously, things are uh, getting more, how can I say, global, and so everybody starts caring and worrying. I think that culture in such a way, and especially in, let's speak of monuments or other heritages, don't belong to us. They belong to our history, and especially to the next generations. 
So we have to find a way to continue it. Uh, personally, <laughs> what I would say of the analog generation, but the new digital generation has a wonderful possibility to take advantage of these uh, uh, technological uh, instruments. Uh, for instance, nowadays, anybody can see any monument on a tablet and even approach and see details or this sort of thing, which is amazing, because in the old days, one would only see it in a photograph in some school book or something like it, or in a catalog. So that's what I think for the young people has a great possibility for them to be familiarized, to think that it's interesting, that it's fun, and not something boring for school or for university and so forth. Uh, on the other hand, I do believe that we have to also be careful and look after these, if we call them monuments, for instance, physically, which is not digitalized. So we have to have finance for it, which sometimes governments think that old ruins are not worth spending. We have to have the installations to protect these uh, vestiges of the, of the past. So these are the challenges to combine the contemporary, or even, I would say, the future with the present. Uh, I also find that we have to think and maybe also use these wonderful technological possibilities in letting people know more about history. Because if we're talking now in all these troubled situations, history for politicians or for decision makers is very important. It's not something for old university professors or old people like myself. It teaches a lot, and you can avoid many mistakes. And of course, this whole cultural issue now of the heritage is so critical because things can be destroyed. Mm -hmm. I've been fortunate enough to visit Ukraine, and I've seen some of the wonderful churches they have, for instance, in Kiev. Well, God forbid that this would be destroyed. In another way, we have the digitalization, which can save, because people can see it in case it would be, as I say, God forbid, destroyed. It could even be reconstructed, as we've seen already in some artifacts. So all this, I think, gives us a, a pretty good uh, possibility to, to be more, uh, how can I say, dynamic about preserving the cultural heritage. Mm -hmm. um, you touched upon legal aspects. So I wonder what your perspective is when it comes to the international law. How do you think, is it enough to uh, sustain countries or um, um, you know, representatives, let's say authorities, to uh, help preserve their cultural heritage? Or is it hindering and it needs improvement? Well, you know, there's many ways of achieving things, but a meeting like this contributes too to start making people aware of these situations or possibilities. There's the different European international agreements about protection of certain monuments, which should be reminded, especially in troubled times. And then I think that there's all kinds of NGOs and so forth who in their own country, seeing that it's a source of national identity, tend to protect or to, to, to raise the issue. Mm -hmm. So I think that it's <coughs> the interconnection we have now around the world, I think, makes it also easier to, to coordinate our efforts. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, we've been talking about monuments a lot, I think, here. Uh, but also, when we speak of cultural heritage, of course, we're talking about intangible culture as well, which is something to keep in mind for all of you here. We're, we will be expecting your questions uh, after, uh, after our session is done here. So I just wanted to uh, put that note as well. Now, I want to turn to you, uh, Omar Bey. I, I see you've been taking notes, so I wonder what you uh, have to say about what has been spoken here so far. But also, I wonder what your perspective is when it comes to digitalization and preserving of cultural heritage. How has your experience been like? Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, uh, it's a great honor to be here in Antalya Diplomacy Forum and to share our thoughts uh, regarding such an important topic. Uh, yes, uh, digitalization is our agenda as well, agenda of our organization, uh, which is called uh, Organization of uh, Turkic State. We have uh, members, Turkey, Azerbaijan, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan, and uh, two observer states, uh, Hungary and uh, uh, Turkmenistan. And we have huge, uh, important uh, heritage uh, stretching from Siberia to Europe and uh, many historic cities like Samarkand, Buhara, Istanbul, or Hiva, or uh, Turkestan. And there is a tremendous uh, objects of the uh, cultural heritage over there. And it's a concern for us how to preserve it, how to transmit it to traditions. Now in the morning, we had a discussion, you remember. Uh, now we have a generation. Uh, they do not read like us. Like in the past, we were reading uh, encyclopedia. We were reading many books. Uh, uh, novels and so on. We were getting familiar with our heritage, uh, with our history and so on. Now there is a new generation. They don't like to read uh, uh, and uh, they like to see everything through digital means, through uh, IT tools. And so uh, our organization is a bit lucky uh, because we have two important, three important organizations organizations like uh, Culture and Heritage Foundation and Turksoy and uh, Turkic Academy. They are dealing with uh, our uh, cultural uh, issues. And uh, in their agenda, uh, digitalization is uh, taking uh, an important place. And now uh, we are planning and developing ideas how to uh, transmit our uh, heritage values and so on to the new generation through uh, through new IT tools, uh, through uh, new, uh, uh, new uh, means. And uh, we have huge discussions in our organization as well with our affiliated related organizations. And now, uh, now I can say our organizations are ready uh, to, uh, to prepare uh, a, a new uh, list of actions uh, for transmitting our cultural heritage, our values to the, uh, to the new generation. Uh, as I told you, they are not reading, uh, they are mostly in computer-based uh, uh, life and uh, through metaverse uh, we are discussing what we can do. So. Uh, so we are lucky, uh, I mean, uh, especially because we have Culture and Heritage Foundation. Uh, Her Excellency, in her uh, uh, speech, he touch, she touched upon uh, an important realities and important actions. So uh, we will be very uh, supportive uh, of this agenda. But I mean, as an organization, when we talk about uh, uh, dig uh, digitalization, uh, we have been mostly uh, focusing on uh, digitalization and economic growth, digitalization and development. And we have also done several uh, programs and projects with international organizations like UNDP. In 2016, we have organized a, a, a big uh, conference, uh, digitalization and development. But now, uh, as well as changing, uh, topics are also changing. Now, mm -hmm. digitalization for uh, maintaining uh, uh, cultural heritage is very important. And in this, uh, in this context, uh, I do believe that uh, this uh, headline is very timely. And as I've told you, uh, in our agenda, uh, digitalization in, any, in many uh, senses is uh, taking its place. And we are lucky to have those organizations that uh, they are preparing programs and projects to transmit the heritage to the new generation through new means, through new digital tools. Thank you.
Thank you so much for this. But I want to uh, ask a, a question to you. After what you've said, yes, we've been talking about how advantageous it could be for us, uh, for people who are trying to uh, maintain cultural heritage. But then, what could, let's think about it this way, what could the disadvantages be when it comes to, yeah. I, think, I think digitalization definitely brings globalization on the yeah, table. Yeah. So. In that sense, what could go wrong and what should we be careful about? No, I mean, uh, yeah, you are very right in this question. Because uh, for me, for example, if you are talking about uh, heritage, a museum, a person, or a city, I want to go, I want to feel, I want to touch, and I want to be in a, uh, in a monument inside. I want to visit. Mm -hmm. But through digital means, you cannot feel it. I mean, there is a, a challenge here that you cannot feel. Maybe you will not feel that much uh, belonging as, I've, as, as I have felt, because uh, I was there. I could visit cities. I could read books. While reading books, I could underline. Uh, I could repeat several times to read in detail, to learn, to grasp the nature of a person, uh, a, a, an important person a great figure of my history. But through digital means, you know, we just, uh, uh, right now we cannot read. We just want everything um, to be transmitted to us through very intensive three, four minutes uh, uh, video records or whatever. Uh, that, uh, but we forget them easily. Uh, and there, there, there has been a study in Harvard University, for example. For example, if you read through a, a computer screen, screen your brain captures it as a, a pic, a picture, a photograph, a photograph that you can forget easily. But uh, now, uh, now we have this problem. We read, but we forget easily. And I see this uh, phenom phenomena in my kids. They are in the computer, they are reading, but they forget easily. Each time I have to remind them, each time I have to remind them. But in the past, you know, when I was a ch ch children, when I was a student, when I was reading, I was underlining, I was memorizing, I, I still remember so many things about my history, about my heritage uh, of my ancestors uh, in the history. But I'm sure my uh, kids or new generation, they will not be like us. They will not. They will. They will have difficulty in remembering, in grasping the true nature, uh, true nature of belonging, and so on. So this is a great challenge that we need to tackle. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, making younger generations care, younger generations with shorter attention spans, yeah. and and uh, of course, as we said, a political agenda full of turmoil. How do we make them care? And, um, and you know how to go about it. These are really important questions. I want to turn to you now. Now that the topic has boiled down to globalization and digitalization, of course, I think you have important things to say because in your case, you, please correct me if I'm wrong, with Arameans, you are um, the president, okay, I, I just had to check my notes for that, president of World Council of Arameans you are dealing with diaspora. Diaspora means globalization. In that sense, your experience uh, in, in digitalization and cultural heritage is definitely much appreciated here. We'd like to listen. Thank you so much, Elif, uh, for the great moderation. And I also would like to express uh, my gratitude on behalf of our organization and our people to the President of Turkey and to the Foreign Minister for organizing this very, very important conference, bringing together diplomats, politicians, uh, scholars, intellectuals, opinion makers from all over the world, and in that sense also giving us the opportunity to explain who we are to this audience, to the whole world who is watching to us today. Um, the Arameans, also called Syriacs, Elif, are the indigenous or the native people of Southeast Turkey. Now, Turkey has such a wealthy heritage. Uh, it has beautiful areas, landscapes, uh, ancient buildings, ancient civilizations have been here. Some of them have been, uh, are dead, like the, the Hittite civilization. One of the civilizations that have been, that is still alive, it's the Aramean population. Our people have a documented history of more than 3,000 years, Alif. And we are the native people of Southeast Turkey, Syria, Iraq, and Lebanon. And we do not have a state of our own. 
in antiquity, let's say 1,000 before Christ, we had kingdoms. Those kingdoms you can find in the Bible, their names. Uh, you can, um, yeah, we had city-states, kingdoms, and today we are like a stateless people. And that is why digitalization is very important for us, because we are spread all over the world. Uh, we have left our home countries. We live in the whole world, basically. And um, yeah, for, for that reason, it is important for us to keep our identity alive. And we do that through different ways. You see that the youth now is very uh, adept to uh, creating websites, communities, language apps, uh, virtual reality um, uh, applications. So this is how we try to uh, preserve our cultural heritage. But I'm very sorry to cut you off, but just add to uh, on top of your point. I think when I uh, when I said that it's not only tangible cultural exactly. heritage. I think uh, in your case, it's definitely the intangible cultural heritage. A lot of it that we're talking about, right? Definitely. And if you please allow me, Alif, I would like to bring something into perspective a little bit more about our people, so people maybe value who we are. Like I want to quote a Belgian professor what he says about the Arameans. In his book, he says, we see the Arameans as a nation that represents one of our cultural ancestors, as one of the points of departure for us in the West. We think it is necessary to consider how the impulses of Western civilization originated in the Middle East. And then a second quote, if you allow me. Uh, an Italian professor said the following, the Greeks and the Romans knew the Near East mainly through the Arameans because it was they who united and canalized the sources of the culture, bringing together Babylonian, Persian, and Hebrew elements and transmitting them to Christianity, and with Christianity to the West. From the West, at a later date, the Arameans were to bring to the East Greek culture, especially philosophy, which became known to the Arabs through the medium of Aramaic. Now, I would like to share with you some niceties, a highlight of the Aramaic language. Aramaic, my mother tongue, is sometimes uh, best known to some of you as the language of Jesus. It is the second language of the Bible after Hebrew. It's the language of Jesus, but it was also uh, an important language for uh, uh, Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. Uh, Aramaic uh, has, was 1400 years the language of the whole Middle East before Arabic in the seventh century uh, came to the fore, Aramaic was the language of the Middle East, like English is today. So speaking about the diplomacy forum, the Aramaic language was an international language to the extent that it was also used for diplomacy, for literature. We know, for example, like Shakespeare is, is very famous, 16th century writer in England, uh, or Dante and other um, intellectuals, now, the Arameans have literature that go back to 500 BC. So we're talking about an ancient culture, an ancient civilization with ancient literatures. And um, another interesting thing is that the Arameans, they brought, uh, let's say, Mesopotamian, uh, Greek, medicine, philosophy to the Arabs. And they translated books from Greek into Aramaic and then into Arabic. And then at a later stage, uh, this knowledge was transferred to Europe, in Cordoba, in Spain, and in other places. So the Arameans can also be seen as having contributed to the enlightenment of Europe indirectly. Now, coming back to cultural heritage, we have ancient churches and monasteries, and we are very grateful to the Ministry of Culture and Tourism. Uh, yesterday, I had the pleasure of meeting the minister himself, uh, because they added nine cultural heritage sites in Southeast Turkey to the World Heritage List of UNESCO. So these are churches and monasteries Alif, that go back to the 6th century and some even to the 4th century. Maybe some of you know the, uh, Mount Athos in Greece. It's a famous mountain uh, area where they have ancient churches and monasteries. But Tur Abdin, the mountain of uh, the servants of God, as we say in Aramaic, is an area that has monasteries going back uh, that are older, 400 years older than Mount Athos. So we have contributed much in antiquity, and some of the scholars have also said that um, we introduced, together with the Phoenicians, the, era, the alphabet. The very term alphabet mm -hmm. you know, are the first two letters of the Aramaic alphabet. 
Aleph Beth, your own name is from Arabic, Aleph. So we would say in our uh, language, Olaf Beth in my dialect. So this is also a nice T, you know, alphabet, alpha, beta, gamma, delta, are taken directly from either the Aramaic or the Phoenician dialects, which are sister languages. Mm -hmm. And Aramaic is also a sister language of Arabic and Hebrew, just like Spanish and Italian. But um, yeah, the, the, the sad thing is that because we are stateless people, and we do not, have, do not have a country. We have become victims of, let's say, certain groups um, that have been destroying much of our cultural heritage. You mentioned tangible heritage. The tangible heritage is ancient buildings, uh, ancient churches, monasteries. And in our churches, we had libraries with manuscripts, you know, ancient manuscripts written by hand, like going back 1,500 years, Aleph. Mm -hmm. And these were destroyed in Iraq and Syria, where we are the native population, as I said. There was one priest, when ISIS came in 2015 to North Iraq, he took his van and put a lot of books in these vans, and he saved them from extinction. Because ISIS destroyed so much uh, of our heritage in Syria and Iraq, yeah. that after uh, ISIS was conquered, they started a new project, a digitization project. So imagine uh, handwritten ma manuscripts, 1,500 years, some 1,000 years old, have been digitized and are accessible to all of us today. Now the next challenge is to translate them uh, to make it really accessible for all of us. The language app is certainly going to be helpful uh, with preserving our mean heritage. So these are really interesting, honestly, but we don't have much time left. May I make one comment, please? Please, like, please, we, we do have, share. Thank you so much. Like the Turkic uh, culture heritage, they, have, they are sponsored by states, right? And the Aramaic language is in need of state sponsorship. So I would like to make a call to the whole world. Any country that is watching here and is hearing my plea on behalf of the Aramean people, who again have no state of their own, we would like to call upon, first of all, Turkey, but also other states, to step in and help us save our language from dying out. Because UNESCO has recognized that the Aramaic language is a threatened language, not just an endangered language, but an but a severely endangered language. So we have only like 50 years to go to save it from extinction. Let's end it on that strong note, let's say. Um, and I would like to turn to the audience uh, now. Going. Okay. Go. It was very much. good to have your conversation. Thank, thank you, you so thank much for you. your contribution. Thank, thank you. you. Um, you now, Gunai Efendieva uh, has to leave for another panel, but thanks so much for being with us today. So I want to turn to the audience now. Do you have any questions after what we've talked here, the, 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 the topics that we've covered? Anyone? Yes, please. Introduce yourself, please, first, and then. We can't hear you. Can you try again, please? Uh, I think it's uh, okay. Uh, I'm Yamur Aşık. I'm a uh, second year, uh, fourth year student in Bilkent University, international relations, and also history minor. Uh, I want to thank you all for your uh, contribution. Such a, um, I think, neglected topic because it's, um, you know, the perceptions of uh, security and economy is really uh, dominating the uh, politic. Uh, sphere, so it's kind of neglected. So uh, I want to ask you about the uh, changing perception uh, because of due to the digital age. Um, what do you think about the new way of perceiving culture stemming from the digital age, especially young people? Because there's lesser attachments, but there's also preservance and uh, lesser intangible practices due to globalization, but it still unites people with their uh, different perceptions and still exists to be embraced as well. Like we see um, different, um, even the restaurants, different um, clothes, and we embrace them all together. It's like mm -hmm. uh, different cultures merging together into a pot, but not completely melting. So what do you think about the changing perception? And I think not this cultural heritage is kind of changing the way it's going to be preserved. Thank Who you. Who is the question directed to? Um, anyone. 
anyone, uh, anyone who, who would like to. to. Thank you. This is, Thank a, you. this is a good question. Before I direct it to you, I just want to give a quick example because I think, if I may share your, your majesty, I think it's a very good example of what you've asked. I'm wearing this bracelet right now, and Your Majesty is wearing the same bracelet too, because it's a Bulgarian tradition, and a Bulgarian friend of mine gave this bracelet to me. You make a wish, it's, it, it, you, know, it's, uh, you wear it when uh, spring comes, and it definitely is part of cultural heritage. We're not only talking about some monuments and some stones that are destroyed under war. That's not what cultural heritage is about. And I think this is a great coincidence. So as for the question, anyone who wants to answer? Please go ahead, Amari. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I see you could no, definitely just, give a good answer. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, globalization matters. Uh, of course, it is melting down as uh, into one. Uh, we are uh, closing to each other in terms of uh, uh, conducts, behaviors, uh, way of life. Uh, we, we are uh, getting similar to each other more and more every day. But at the same time, uh, we have our own char characteristics. Uh, we, ha we have our own uh, history and culture. Somehow we need to keep it as well, uh, I believe. Uh, for example, for me, uh, I'm from Antalya, uh, and uh, we have a big farm. Uh, when I look at sometimes my, at my farm, I see many flowers. When there are many different flowers in the farm, farm looks more beautiful. I mean, the world should be like this as well. Yes, globalization is important, peace is important. Uh, in terms of many things, okay, we can get close to each other. At the same time, we should keep our own peculiarities. We should preserve them. And uh, through the digital means, uh, uh, of course, we will be able to know more and more about different cultures. Uh, in this uh, context, I think uh, uh, I am in favor of globalization. At the same time, I'm in favor of... Uh, uh, preserving the local uh, characteristic and peculiarities. And uh, in the digital age, we should take this into consideration as well, especially the younger generation, to my mind. They should pay attention to this fact. Thank you. Thank you. I wonder if you have anything to say on the topic of uh, globalization, localization, and uh, so forth. Thank you, moderator. Let me start by quoting our founding president and who is also the founding father of the Namibian nation, who will always say, the nation without culture is nothing. Know your roots, where you have come from. In today's generation, they are the most people who might lose out on our cultural heritages of not knowing what it is. But for the message I will send to the parents that the parents of these young generations should really try all by all means. We know what have come in between. They, they are more on internet and so, but they are not interested in finding out of their roots. So for that matter, one will really say that it's up to us who are here today to transfer it to the younger generations through the digital means for them to able to, to know where they have come from. Thank you. Thank you. I forgot to say, I was uh, giving you an example, a farm, for example. I mean, our world should be uh, uh, consisting of many uh, flowers. We are all nations, you know, whether we are Bulgarian, Turks, or Hungarian, or uh, European, or Asians. Uh, we are different. Uh, we have certain similarities. At the same time, we are uh, different. We should keep this as it is, as uh, different flowers uh, in a farm to look more beautiful. And can you imagine a garden uh, is made up of the same flowers or various different flowers? I mean, uh, this is my approach to globalization. That's why I always believe in preserving the peculiarities and characteristics. Thank you. Thank you. Any more questions? Yes, please. Can everybody hear me? Yes. So I'm Denise, I'm from Middle East Technical University. I've uh, 
uh, finished the fourth year bachelor's degree of science, public science and political sciences. And I just wanted to ask Johnny, uh, Mr. Johnny, about because he mentioned while talking, he, he mentioned about diaspora and other cultural things. And uh, I also have uh, looked after the Albanian diaspora because I've lived there for many years. And I just wanted to ask if, uh, if he believes or do you think that uh, different diasporas uh, can break the cultural linkages between different countries or cultures? What exactly do you mean by that? For example, like we can, there, <clears throat> we can say like Armenians live in Turkey, in Syria, and many other countries. For example, how the way that the Armenians or other people treat each other when they live in a, in a, in the same city or in the same region. Do you believe that this damages the linkage, the cultural linkage they have with each other, or it doesn't? Yes. Yes, it does. It's a very good question. Uh, like, you can consider it like this. So you have the homeland on the one hand and the diaspora countries, all the countries outside of the homeland. And what we do is we try to think of how can we connect these two entities with each other. And if you look at the people in the diaspora, like I've been born and raised in the Netherlands. My parents were born and raised in Southeast Turkey, in Midyat. And mm. you see that my culture, my way of thinking has been... Uh, very much influenced by Dutch society. And the same goes for our people in any other country of the world, Sweden uh, or in Syria, in any country of the world, they have been changing their mindset, their way of thinking, you know, their behavior, their conduct. So it is impacting our, uh, our traditional identity, our traditional values. So um, that's also why it's very important, as uh, your excellency, you mentioned it, uh, that you have to know your roots. Like, Today we notice that um, the younger generations, they no longer understand the very concept of cultural heritage, of identity. And for us it's important to uh, explain to them how important identity is because if you have a firm sense of self-awareness and you know your history, your traditions, and you also understand how to interact with other human beings, with other cultures, it only enriches yourself as an individual, as a human being, and also as a community in that sense. So yes, um, a diaspora situation can very much impact you. Psychologically, for example, that you cry about your homeland. Mm -hmm. You know, you have been uprooted from your homeland. You cry about it, you sing about it, you laugh about it with your friends. You know, you dream about going one day back to the homeland. Mm -hmm. I can give you an example, like we, bought, we brought with us uh, several years ago, a group of uh, 138 Arameans from Europe and Australia uh, to Southeast Turkey. Some of them, haven't been to the region for 40 years, imagine, to their, home, to their homes. Some of the young girls and young women uh, and young guys, they were born and raised in a diaspora. But they always heard the stories about their fa fathers and mo mothers growing up in the houses. So imagine, they went never to the homeland. And the moment they came there, the very moment they, they you know, touched the soil, the holy earth, you know, of the homeland, and they saw the house, all those stories came to life, they started to cry. And you know, I got goosebumps when I saw that. And you almost wanted to cry with them. And you see the, how important it is to connect diaspora with the homeland communities. And uh, yeah, it, it is impacting us. Uh, and one can speak much more about it, but... Absolutely. Thanks for your mm. question. It's a very good question. Thank you so mm. much. And also, it, it, it's, uh, say, for example, Turkey, I mean, uh, for a Turkish diaspora in Europe, it must be kind of different for you and the Turkish diaspora, let's say, because there is this Turkey that they can refer to, but whereas with you, you just said, you know, it's a diaspora without a country, really, to go back to, in that sense, you know, a land uh, of its own. So very interesting dynamics there. Thanks so much uh, for, for your contribution. I guess we can have one more question. If not, it should be that, but yeah, yes, please. Actually, thank you very much for your contribution for everybody. I would like to use this chance as just very short comment, if you just agree with that. Uh, I do work for Turksoy for the last 10 years, and we are in the area of cultural heritage preservation as well, as Mr. Ömer Kocaman shared, and thanks him for also mentioning our name in this very unique organization. I would like to comment that uh, maybe, like, 
recreating, rebuilding a monumental heritage will be tough for everybody, but rediscovering or learning about it or sharing about the leading characters in our culture is the easiest way. And this will help to uh, preserve the culture that we uh, live in through and uh, transfer it to the next generation. So I would like to invite everybody in this hall to follow our works the, regarding the cultural heritage, mm -hmm. regarding the preserving culture, and just especially recognizing and underlining the name of the Turksoy, the organization of Turkic state, and the cultural heritage organization that she spoke uh, and shared. And thank you very much again for everybody for their contribution. Thank you for your comment. And um, I think we're ready to wrap up unless you want to add anything as for final words. Okay, then I think um, I just want to say that it was interesting to see virtual reality projects uh, come to the surface when it comes to digitalization and uh, preserving cultural heritage. And the language app that you were mentioning also is a good example of how digitalization can be uh, a force for good, I think. But also, again, as for disadvantages, uh, I want to refer to you again, because you said that uh, con trying to convince the digital generation, uh, the new generations, to stick to their cultural identities and to, you know, um, still believe that culture and cultural heritage and history is important, that becomes one huge challenge, I guess, because everything is becoming easier. So, uh, you know, having a, a global identity is perhaps hindering uh, all the motivation to, to, to do so. We touched upon international legal aspects, we touched upon diaspora and uh, and you mentioned again generations and how uh, it is important to work on the differences. So I enjoyed this very much and I want to thank each one of you and you as well for taking the time to be with us today and sharing your perspectives and listening to us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.